Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. We build a lot of sunrooms, but rarely are they this big. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. I'm glad you joined us this week. You know, over the last few years, so many homeowners are spending a lot more time around their home. As a result of that, they're looking to create a place that's really comfortable to enjoy the time you have at your home. That's what's fueling the popularity of sunrooms and screen rooms. Well, these homeowners couldn't decide on exactly which one they wanted, so they're getting both. Downstairs, large screen area, the storage area. Upstairs, one large sunroom. Now, if you're considering either type of room like this, we've got some great ideas for you on this week's show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Now I told you we were building a large sunroom and you can see just how massive this room really will be. Our framers have really made a lot of progress over the last few days putting it all together. And we have a roof overhead which is a good thing because it's starting to get a little rainy on the outside but we have plenty to do on the inside. The sunroom really looks just as big on the inside as it does on the outside and it's a pretty good sized room, 18 feet wide and over 34 feet long. Now it took a lot of wood to build an addition this large. Let me show you just some of the framing techniques that went into the building of this addition. First of all, in the roof area, we used two by eights, both for the ceiling joist and the rafters, and tied those right into the existing brick wall using treated two by twelves and plenty of lag bolts and anchors tying it to that wall. It's very important. And the reason that we didn't remove all of the bricks is because of the expense and the difficulty of supporting bricks that are up above the roof line on the existing house. Now we did the same thing here in leaving the bricks in place and building a wall right in front of it. This will allow us to add a little bit of extra insulation for soundproofing between this room and the adjacent room. And also, it makes the electrician's job a lot easier running all of his wires along this new wall. Now, the homeowners didn't want to lose out on the glass window that they have, the octagon window in this room. So we're extending it out into this new room so that the light that they experience in this room can still get into that room. Now there's going to be a lot of light in this sunroom because we have a series of five large window openings, four on the back and one on the north side of the addition. Now the homeowners were concerned because of this side being on the west side and that late afternoon sun can really heat up a room like this. So by going with two by six framing on the walls allow us to put a little bit more insulation in the wall itself. And because of the span of this room, we needed the two by sixes for support on the outside wall. Now talking about the span that we have, this 18 foot span is very important that it be built right so that it's not spongy at all. Under me, we have wood I-beams running from the outside wall back to another wall downstairs. And then on top, we use three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood, both glued and nailed down so that we have a squeak free and very strong floor system. Now also, most of the walls that we have are built very close to the brick, but in one case, over in the chimney side, we actually left about 18 inches there to allow for a future routing of air conditioning and heating ductwork that will run through there. There's also a lot of framing that's taking place downstairs. Now it may look like a couple large window units here, but they're actually going to be screen panels so that the homeowners can enjoy this area without the bugs being on the inside. Now it's really a large area down here as well. It's taking up about two thirds of what we have available upstairs. And we've carried the same stud walls around against the bricks down here. And that's all treated wood since we're more exposed to the weather with it being a screen room. Also, we're utilizing this area for not only a little inside storage, but also the air conditioning and heating equipment will be installed here. Now I talked about the wood I-beams earlier. You can see them up above that are 12 inches deep and span the entire 18 feet. Now over on the other end of the addition is an area we're calling outside storage. 
because the homeowners needed a place to store some of the uh, wheelbarrows and a few things like that. So this perfect area for that. And we'll actually be putting bricks right up against here and supporting them with a brick steel lintel running along here that will incorporate into the brick columns and have a nice little brick accent running around the top part of this. Now this is a fairly large job, but before the end of the show, you'll see it completed. Stay with us. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and home repair expert Joe Trewini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by DuPont Tyvek. Build it once, build it right. The door and window screens at your home serve a very important purpose. That's to allow the fresh air in, but not allow any bugs to get in. But if it's torn or it's ripped, it's not going to serve that purpose. That's right, Danny. If the screen has got a hole in it, you can repair it. But if it's badly torn, you're really better off replacing the entire screen. What you need to do is pull out the old rubber spline and, and remove the old screen, then cut a new piece of screen slightly larger than the frame and put it back in using a new piece of rubber spline. Now with a small puncture like this, Joe, I've seen a lot of the little repair kits that are really pieces of screen that you glue over it. Right. The problem with those is they're more obvious than the, the hole itself. Yeah, that's for sure. So what I'd rather do is try to repair it. And if the hole's small enough, you can. The trick is to first use your fingers and a putty knife or even like a, a needle nose pliers work well to straighten out the bent fibers. So what you want to do is push them all down and try to get them lined up as best you can. And once you got them filled in, got that hole filled back in, you take nothing more than some clear nail polish, which I don't ordinarily carry around in my pocket. I hope not. But, but I brought it out to show you this trick. And what you need to do is just apply a coat first to one side and put in a nice thick coat because what you want to do is bridge the space where that hole was. And let it dry just a minute or two, flip it over and apply a second coat to the back side. Now this is aluminum screen, which is very common, but this trick will also work. Welcome back to the show. Things are really moving along well here on our sunroom screen room project and we're ready for our brick mason to show up who will be here in just a few days to install all the bricks on the exterior of this two-story addition. On the inside, all of the concentration is on finishing up the interior walls, including the installation of a fairly unique material downstairs by our lead carpenter, Scott Morgan. There's a big change downstairs here and actually Scott and Steve are in the process of installing one of the last pieces of material up on the walls. Now, this isn't plywood, it's actually a fiber cement siding. Now, if you've watched the show in the past, you've probably seen some of the lap siding that we've used on a lot of exterior of homes. And this is basically the same material just coming in sheet form with kind of a simulated stucco finish on it. Now, it's a little heavier than regular plywood, but works great in an environment like this. It's a screen porch. It'll bound to get a little bit of exposure to the elements. Now, Scott, I know you've installed a lot of different materials on walls like this. Uh, how does this compare in terms of the uh, installation? I guess it's about the same as plywood. Yeah, it's the same. It's just a little bit heavier and dustier to cut. Yeah, now what about the cutting? I know I've cut some of the, the actual siding, um, the lap siding, but uh, I guess this is about the same. Yeah, it's just a little bit more dust involved. Okay. Now, I know that they recommend a um, diamond tip or an abrasive type blade for cutting, but uh, I understand a regular carbide tip works pretty good. Right. We went to a carbide tip blade. It cuts a little smoother for us. Okay. All right. And nailing it up with a spiral nail, I know, just like you would in any environment like this. But uh, I noticed that uh, the homeowners got away from the fiber cement and uh, went with plywood on the ceiling. What's the reason there? They just wanted a slick finish up there and it's a lighter material to use. Okay, a little change in texture. Correct. There. Okay. Now, on the installation of this, of course, anything that you're hanging over your head is a little harder than just hanging it on the walls, but I noticed that you've grooved the, the grooves here, which uh, really gives it a nice appearance. Right. We took a block plane and plane the edges, you know, caulk it in. Okay, and the painters like that to be able to come back in and, and caulk that. Now, uh, you're doing a similar thing to the joints here on the fiber cement. Right. We've got a scoring tool. We'll go down on the joints and score all the joints. Okay, and then it'll be ready for the painter then. Right. All right, great. Well, it looks good. I know you've got a few more pieces to put up, and all of this will be ready for the painter. And actually, they've gotten a head start in coming in and spraying a primer over all of the wood that we have in place now. And they're busy on the outside with their airless sprayer, taking care of a lot of the raw wood there so that we'll be ready for the brick masons on the outside. Now upstairs, there's a lot of drywall finishing going on. Not only do we have all of our drywall installed upstairs, our finishers in the process of taping all of the joints, which is the first step in completely finishing all of the walls and the ceiling. 
Now about a week ago our insulation contractor was out to install the insulation in the walls and the ceiling and that was followed by the drywall hangers. It took a little over a day and a half to complete the hanging of all of the drywall. Now we're a little ahead of schedule and our windows won't be here for another day or so so we've just boarded up the windows so that we can continue on schedule with the installation of the finished walls. Our trim guys will be here in just a few days so Mark really has a lot of work ahead of him. Now this is a large addition and one consideration that you have to really think about early in a project like this is the heating and cooling needs. Now we thought about it several months ago and had a heating and cooling contractor look at the plans and determine that an extra system would be needed for this new living area. Now we located the equipment downstairs next to the screen room we were just in and we allowed a space here that we looked at earlier behind the old fireplace for the routing of all the ductwork that was necessary. Here we have our return air ductwork that came up. We'll have a filtered grill here, so it'll be real easy for the homeowners to regularly change their filter. And then behind the wall here, we have supply lines going up into the attic that take care of all of the outlets that we have to take care of all the heating and cooling needs. So it's something you really have to think about when you're adding a substantial amount of living space to your home. Now, before the end of the show, we'll see this completed project, including a look at some of the brickwork that's taking place downstairs. But next, our best new product of the week. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out the best new products. Brought to you by The Home Depot. Many times a nice sharp drill bit can be a luxury when you're doing a home improvement project around your home. Because if you're like me, you've probably gone to your toolbox to get that special drill bit only to find that it's very dull and just doesn't perform very well. Now if you've tried to sharpen any drill bits in the past, it's not an easy project to do, but now it is with the Drill Doctor. Now the Drill Doctor is a portable sharpening device that I have a little display here to show you that simply sits on your workbench, plugs right into the wall, then you're able to unscrew the little cam here that has rubber stoppers of different sizes so that you can install or insert your drill bit into this. Then it provides the proper alignment so that when you put it back in and turn it on, it'll be right at the right angle for your diamond sharpening wheel that's inside the unit to sharpen it, only in 30 to 60 seconds. Now this will accommodate a drill bit from 330 seconds up to a half inch thick, and this includes some of the expensive masonry blades or masonry bits that you frequently have to sharpen anytime you're drilling through any type of masonry or brick. Now it's again very simple to use and actually in the kit comes a video that shows you step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to use it. And when you look at some of the cost of some of the bits that are here, you can realize that for less than $80, it won't take long for the drill doctor to pay for itself. There we go, that looks great. Welcome back to the show. Now that all of the sheetrock is up and completely finished and we have all of our windows in, we can start the trim stage of this project. There's a fair amount of trim that actually will be going in this project, including all of the trim around the windows. Right now they're in the process of installing some of the six inch base. Now you may notice the little spacers that we have every few feet. And these are just temporary. And this is to position the baseboard up off the ground about half inch so that when we install the hardwood floor, we're not covering up any of the reveal of the baseboard. We don't want to cover up any of the nice trim. But the thing that's really taking the most time is the deep casings we're having to work with around some of the existing openings. Now, if you remember, we built a stud wall that was built right in front of the original brick wall. So we had to transition from the old casings out to here because we want to save the window and still enable some natural light to go into the bathroom that's on the adjacent wall. We're also having to do the same thing with some of the other windows and even more work involved in the cased openings we have that serve as the access point from the original part of the house out to the new addition. You can see how wide of an area we have to deal with and it's so wide, we really can't even use the one by 12s we have out on the job. We had to go with a smooth plywood that's a 3 8 of an inch plywood. Now the cased opening that's on the other side of the fireplace has already been completed. You can get an idea of just how nice this will look once it's all trimmed out. Also, 
a room's not complete without the proper size crown molding. You can see the five and a half inch molding that we have going up. They've been working on that a good bit this morning. And after all of this is in, we'll be ready for our painters to make it out on the job and really finish the inside of this project. Now the rain's kind of hurting us outside because our brick masons are anxious to get started. As Soon as the weather clears, I'll be laying some bricks. It will take about 3,000 bricks to brick up the outside of this addition, and it's fairly slow work because a lot of the work has to be done from the scaffolding. Also, you need decent weather to lay the bricks out here, and it's certainly not cooperating now. But our brick mason, Roy Miller, has found a way to keep his crew busy with the covered area that we have here that requires quite a bit of brickwork. Now, to get started on an addition is certainly different than bricking a new home. Here with an addition, you're having to tooth in or lace in the new bricks with the old, and you get started with that, and you're able to keep the same spacing of the bricks so that it all matches up once all the mortar dries. It's also important to match the color of the mortar, the color of the bricks, and one thing that surprises a lot of people, there's different size bricks. The type we're using here is called a queen size brick. Now, it's a little bit different, and Roy, in terms of the size of a queen size versus a regular brick, how does it really differ? Uh, the queen size bricks cover more, more space than a standard size brick. So the face is a little taller, I it's understand. A little taller. It cover uh, more surface than a standard size brick. Okay, how many bricks per square foot would you need on the queens? On the queen size, it normally takes five bricks per square foot and on the standard, uh, seven bricks. Okay, all right, so you'll use less bricks by using the queen then? Yes. All right, great, great. And there's a lot of work here as far as the brick work because of all of the columns they're having to construct where we had a steel column that was holding up the upper part of the addition, so that had to be bricked around. And then the area they're working on now is being supported by a steel brick lintel. The steel angles support the weight of the brick so that we can carry the look of that brick right across which will allow it to tie in to the rest of the addition like it should. Well, they're staying busy here even though the weather's bad and we're about to go outside for Around the Yard. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard. Lawn and garden tips you can use straight from the experts. Brought to you by TimberTech Engineered Decking Systems. Less work, more life. I'm with Dr. Trey Rogers, who's a turf expert, and Trey, I've always heard to have a nice, healthy lawn, you have to water it properly. Best yards are watered, there's no question about it, and the question I get asked the most is, uh, when do we water? When I've always heard early in the morning is best, but I really never knew why. I love early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I say between four and nine, and the uh, reason is if when the wind is not blowing, mm -hmm. and so now we're going to water is going to hit the target yard, not the street. Right. That's good. Uh -huh. So why is it so bad to water um, like overnight when there's no sun out at all? Well, I like watering early in the morning because the sun's going to come up and dry the leaf. If mm -hmm. you water at night, the leaf stays wet all night long, good chance for turf disease. Okay, all right. We certainly don't want that. Well, what about the uh, quantity of water and how do you know how much to water a yard? Inch of water a week is my rule of thumb. No matter, no matter where you live in the country? Well, if early in the I mean, early in the year you might not need as much, late in the fall you might not need as much, but mm -hmm. in the summer a little bit more, but that inch of water is pretty good. Now how do you measure that inch of water? That's a good question there. <laughs> now, you, now you get into one of my tricks, and that's use a tuna can, mm -hmm. put it in the ground, turn the water on, let it run for about 30 minutes, measure it, multiply it by two, then you know how many inches per hour you're putting on your yard. All right, great tips, Trey. Our two-story addition is all complete and blends in just like we wanted it to. Now on the upper level, our new sunroom is just beautiful. There's tons of space with about 700 square feet and loads of daylight from the wall of windows. Plus, there's a warm, homey feeling that's added by the hardwood floors. Down below, there's a covered porch area and the screen room we looked at earlier. The fiber cement sheet siding really looks good now that it's been caulked and painted. Now we could have saved the homeowners a good bit of money by not using brick on this massive addition, but any other materials, it would have looked like an addition and you never want that. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. I'm Danny Lifter. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.